Hello and welcome to today's tutorial. My name is Alex and I would like to introduce you the System Scout. The System Scout is one of four products in the Performer Suite, as you can see in this overview on this slide. The products have in common that they accelerate time-consuming tasks in the BI context, such as documenting, analyzing, translating and migrating through automation. This tutorial is only about the System Scout and I would like to show you how you can get an overview of your system landscape with helpful analysis functions and therefore gain transparency. Before we jump into the tool itself, I would like to quickly demonstrate the challenges you actually face when using the various SAP solutions for data modeling and visualization. To do this, I would like to refer to this graphic where we can see the various solutions from the SAP analytics area on the one hand and on the other hand, the various modeling and visualization options for data are also shown here. What we can already see here is that we have different data modeling options. If you now have this solution in use or have a part of these solutions in use, you will quickly realize that there are many options to model the data and to visualize it in different ways. This creates relations between the systems and between the objects, which over time can, can quickly lead to a loss of overview and transparency. Let's take a closer look at some of the relations. There is, of course, the possibility that we access a BW query with, for example, analysis for office. And this BW query is traditionally based on a BW data model on a composite provider that contains ADSOs. We could also go directly to a HANA composite provider with a design studio or Lumira report or directly to a multi-provider and skip the query. And the composite provider then gets its data from the ADSO again. We have further possibilities to combine the HANA and BW world in a so-called mixed scenario. Then we have other scenarios. For example, we now have an analytic application in SAC, which consumes data from SAC model. And this model is based on a live connection towards a BW query, where we then see the classic BW data model again. Or you use the embedded analytics solution and directly access the CDS views that you have modeled in the ERP or S4 system with your SSC model. Of course, you don't use everything at the same time. I hope you can find your approach um, in one of the presented ones. My goal was to show you that there are various ways to visualize and model data and depending on the approach, there are connections between the BO, SAC, BW and ERP systems that you can quickly lose track of over time. So we see dependencies between the objects within the systems but also across system dependencies. These dependencies are not comprehensible with the SAP standard functions. This is where the System Scout comes into play to bring transparency. In addition to data modeling and visualization, we also have to deal with logic at various points. For the BW data transfer, for example, routines can be used that are based on ABAP or a SQL script. We have script-based views, table functions on HANA, or script-based CDS views in the S4 database. So there is coding in many different places that is often not easy to understand. Here, as well, we are convinced that it makes sense to bring tool-supported transparency into data modeling and visualization. Let's take a look at the functions offered by the System Scout and how they work in a live demo. The analysis functions can be started from two perspectives. Either I can first open the analysis function and select the object I want to analyze, or alternatively, I can start the analysis from the object itself, for example, from this entity grid. Let's take a look at the first analysis. I want to show how to analyze the data model below a query with the system scout to get an overview of the complete application. To do this, I first search for a query from my BW system using the search bar here. We now have a query called procurement value analysis um, that I want to check out in more detail. 
To do this, I can use the context menu and first display the data flow that exists below this query within the BW system. So the tool now connects with the BW system and analyzes all the dependencies that exist between the objects. What do we see? Well, the query is based on a composite provider which consumes data from various ADSOs and HANA and one HANA calculation view. Then we have multiple transformations with update logics. Here we have a corporate memory layer and at the end of the data sources on the BW side. This is nothing special at first, so you can also display something like this in Eclipse, but now we will come to the special features. In the current BW perspective, we cannot yet understand which front-end objects are based on this data model or from which sources um, the data comes. And this brings us to the first advantages of the System Scout. We can look at dependent objects from other systems, so which front-end objects are actually based on this query and obtain data from it. To do, to do this, I can simply click on Show Higher Level Entity and get a list of all front-end reports that are based on this query. I'm going to show two of them to keep it simple, we can see the System Scout managed to show these dependencies in this network graph. So, what do we have? Well, there's an SAC story which is based on an SAC model. And this model uses a live connection to consume data from the BW query. Um, this Lumira report procurement analysis uses this query as a data source. So. Yeah, this is a first example of how the System Scout can map the cross-system dependencies from BW to the front end and display the connection. Of course, that's not all. If we want to find out which sources the BW data sources use, we can also display these sources by clicking on Show le Lower Level Entities at the top. If we do this, we will quickly see that these data sources consume data from various CDS views of my ERP system, shown here as data definitions that are behind the CDS views. Let's summarize briefly. The System Scout can combine objects from five different SAP solutions in one um, network graphic with just a few clicks. Next, I want to visually enhance the data flow by highlighting certain layer architectures by clicking on this button up here. So we see at a glance that at the top we have the presentation layer with the SSC and Lumira reports. Then we see the reporting layer with the query, the virtual data mart, the EDW layer, the transformation layer and so on. We also see the CDS views com coming from the S4 HANA system and the calculation views from the HANA database. So we have now seen the first functions that help you to get an overview of an entire application. Let's hide the layers and front-end objects says I would like to show you next how you can use certain functions to be able to understand the update logics within the data model in more detail. In this data flow we see several transformations in which lookups can also occur, meaning that data is read from other info providers. Of course, I don't see these info providers here in this network graph right now, because they are not directly connected to any displayed info provider. Nevertheless, the System Scout offers the possibility to identify such lookups, such lookup operations by performing a lookup scan for this entire data model. So I can start this function here at the top, and the tool now scans all transformations and checks where such lookup, lookups occur. The transformation nodes have now expanded and I get more information about where additional data is being read from. Here, for example, we have a lookup on the active table of an ADSO. Here below we have a lookup on a DDIC table called ZVendor, or we also have master data read operations, in this case on Z0 material. 
If I want to understand the lookup in more detail, for example, how exactly the data is read from the active table, then I can even display the source code in the tool itself. To do this, I open the context menu of this transformation and display the source code. Here I also get the location highlighted where exactly the lookup takes place. Besides the update routines, it is also possible to use filter operations. So the question may arise at which points in the data model are data actually filtered? The System Scout also offers answers to these questions with the DTP scan that I call up here. Similar to the lookup scan, the System Scout goes through the various transformations, searches for the DTPs and shows where certain data is filtered. The transformation nodes open again and I can see there is, for example, a fixed value filter on the purchasing group PG1. Here material class values are filtered out of the data update. The whole thing works, of course, not only for fixed values, but also for filter routines or filter variables that could be placed in various places. Let's move on to the next function, the mapping analysis, which allows me to find out how the data flows. This is especially interesting when you want to trace where a certain characteristic or key figure of a query originally came from. To do this, I start the mapping analysis. And the system scout will perform a data lineage down to the data sources for each characteristic and key figure of the analyzed query. Then the tool will give us a visual representation of the results so that we as users can very quickly understand where a certain piece of information came from and what happened to it during the data flow. This can take a few seconds because we are now doing this analysis for all the mentions and key figures in the background. However, it is still faster than the manual analysis. On the right side, we can see the structure of the query as a tree structure so that I can select the characteristic or key figure I'm interested in. Let's run the function for zero deliveries. Let's assume we have a question about where this key figure comes from and how it is updated. Then I can just click on this and we can see very nicely how the system scout visually resolves the mapping. The query consumes the data from the composite provider, of course. The composite provider gets the key figure from this ADSO. Then we get to the first transformation where we seem to have a direct assignment from zero deliveries to zero to zero deliveries from this info source. This info source is again supplied with another transformation where we have a mapping between the field Alif and the info object. And then we see here below that the ADSO itself is served from this data source below where there's a mapping between the field Alif and Alif from the ADSO. So this was a simple update logic of this key figure. In reality, it is mostly more complex because there are different root types like, for example, field routines, end routines, expert routines, and so on. The system scout can handle them too. For the more complex example, I will take the key figure order quantity electronics. This is based on a restricted key figure. And we have the basic key figure um, zero order quant. And we want to analyze it now. We see that the system scout is also able to display formulas or routines properly. And I can have a look at um, in more detail by clicking here. So a very, very comfortable way to get a good insight into the complex mapping of a data model. The System Scout also offers other helpful analysis functions beyond the data model, which we will now take a closer look at. So first of all, we can display the structure of individual objects. So if I'm interested in the structure of a certain query, I can easily access it from the data flow and find out how it is structured and which elements it consists of. The system scout goes into the system and looks for the elements of this query and shows them to me in the form of a tree structure. So I see the structure, the different filters with the three characteristics, the key figures and the rows and columns definitions, which variables are used and which conditions and so on. 
Now I can drill down the structure to see all the dependencies and filter settings. In addition, I can also see the formula of calculated key figures or the restrictions of restricted key figures here. Another use case that this function can support is the cross-system comparison of objects, which is especially helpful when the system landscape consists of a development test and productive system. The system scout offers a comparison function for this purpose. To do this, I start the comparison mode here and then call up the same query in another system and drag it to the right-hand side for the comparison. Afterwards, I display the differences between the query from the production system and the development system. If I then click on automatic comparison, the tool highlights the differences down to the individual value restrictions very nicely. Let's move on to the next function. We have already seen in this data flow what kind of dependencies we have in the system or across systems. If I don't want to analyze such things visually, but rather in the form of a list, I can do that as well. The System Scout offers very powerful way used analysis functions for this purpose. For example, I can select several objects at the same time and then check where they are used. In other words, a classic way used analysis. The big difference? The System Scout goes much further than the SAP standard function functionalities. It does not only check the usage of an object within the system, but we check the usage across systems and also in the coding. So I can specify here where the usage should be checked. For example, the usage in BO, SAC or HANA or also in the coding. I can then start the analysis and now the system scout prepares the results for me in detail. We will see in a moment that there are then different tabs um, where the results are summarized so that we get a full overview of where the objects are used. This can be especially helpful when objects should be changed and you want to understand what the impact of the, that change can be and what you should check in terms of consistency after the change. First, we have a tab with the direct usage of these objects inside um, the BW system. In the second tab, we see the usage of objects in the coding and it seems like this ADSO is used um, in this routine. And if I want to see that in more detail, I can go look at the source code in more details here as well. There's also usage in transports, in HANA, in SAC, and last but not least, the usage in business objects. So we see a complete and therefore very helpful way use analysis. Okay, let's come to the end of this tutorial. We have seen that during data modeling and visualization, objects are created that have complex dependencies within the system or across systems. This fact and further complex logics, which occur, for example, during the data transfer, lead to the fact that you can quickly lose the overview. The System Scout presents these dependencies and logics in an easy and understandable way, for example, with the help of Net4, network graphics and data lineage. Equipped with the functions of the System Scout, you can obtain helpful information with just a few clicks and gain a perfect overview of your SAP systems and therefore work more efficiently in your BI projects. I have only shown you a small selection of features. If you're interested in discovering the System Scout by yourself, you can do this in a 30-day trial. Feel free to contact me for this. Have a nice day and bye-bye.